hello. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Apollo Justice Ace Attorney. Yeah. And welcome it. my guest. I was welcoming the chat, not you. <laughs> hello. <laughs> welcome my guest, Robot Jellyfish, who has been a mod in my channel for some time. Hello, it's me, Robot Jellyfish. He has his own channel. I he do. does his own I streams. Really you should check out his jellyfish. streams. Yeah. At Robot Jellyfish underscore eternal. Okay. I have the game open already. Let me just stream it to you. Yes. I can see. You can see. Wonderful. Yes. All right. Let's go ahead and get started then. Yeah. Let me just move OBS so I can see it better. All right. And go. About Trump. I'm excited. I haven't played this game in so long. Yeah, I haven't played it in years. Got this mysterious cutscene. Showdown time. Someone hit him. Hard. Me? Please. The cop should be here at any minute. I'm in your hands. Should it come to that. Yeah, unfortunately, the text uh, goes by itself. <laughs> That's fine. Panicked. Palms sweaty. I can admit it. I'm nervous. That's Kristoff. Ah, good morning. <laughs> good morning, sir. I promise I get to talk eventually. <laughs> <laughs> you look tense, Justice. Wound up tight. But wound up, sir? No! I'm loose! I'm fine! That screeching noise. Is that your voice? I suppose it's to be expected your first trial and it's a homicide i guess justice doesn't start small eh not the first justice joke and not the last <laughs> oh, i love the justice jokes in this game i got up at 5 a.m to do my cords of steel voice workout i'm fine ah that explains it i did detect a certain rasping quality to your screech I overdid it again. <laughs> As you know, your client today is a good friend of mine. I wouldn't want to let him down, if you get my drift. Drift gone, sir! I'm all about that drift! As it happens, I dined with him the night of the murder. We can't let this case fall through. Yes! Yeah, yes, I'm fine, sir! One more thing. Don't say you're fine quite so much. People might take you the wrong way. Mm. I'll be preparing our case. You might want to introduce yourself to the client. Maybe. Might be a good idea. My name is Apollo Justice. If it isn't clear already, I'm a new attorney. It's clear. And today is my first trial. Not that I'm worried or anything. The defendant has been accused of murder. My boss wants to help him out, of course. And so do I. I mean, there's no way he did it. 
Not him. No way. Hey, buddy. I love this hobo. <laughs> no. Good uh, morning. Good morning. It's all up to you today. First trial. Nervous. Meeting him. Cardiac arrest. I think I'm supposed to say something. Uh, help. So you're. Fine! I'm fine! Ah, Mr. Fine, is it? Ah! <laughs> I did remember you having an odd name. Well, we're off to a great start. Um, are you, are you sure you're okay? I mean, with me? Mr. Gavin is a top-notch defense attorney. And he's your friend, so why... DLC. Huh? You, you can do it. Be confident. Um, I... I'm really sorry this happened to you. I mean... I mean, I... It's time. Shall we? Y yes sir! Okay. I need to focus. First trial. Here comes justice. Here comes justice. I didn't realize I'd be talking to myself so much at the beginning. <laughs> what have I done? <laughs> it's okay. I get to talk soon. Yeah, I'm excited. The court is now in session. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. Uh, the defense is... Uh, fine! I I'm ready, Your Honor! Mind going blank? Don't panic. It's yeah, too late! Your name was Mr. Justice? And this is your first trial? Yes, Your Honor. But I'm fine! Really! Are you quite sure? Your voice sounds a bit strained. <clears throat> Ahem. Mr. Gavin? Yes, Your Honor. I was under the impression that you would be heading up this case. That was my intention, yes. However, a defense attorney must always see to his client's wishes. And my client specifically requested Mr. Justice. Well, of course he wants justice. But to entrust his case to this greenhorn, why? I do not exaggerate when I say that you're the best defense attorney in town, Mr. Gavin. Hey, so Gavin's got trial experience. Fine. But does he have cords of steel? Then let's begin. The defendant may enter the courtroom. Here he is. Here he is. This is truly an unfortunate turn of events. I'm sorry we had to meet again under these circumstances. Long time no see, Mr. Wright. Let's put the past behind us, shall we? These days, I'm merely Phoenix Wright, piano player. Mr. Wright, how could this have happened? I won't speak of it further, then. If the prosecution would be so kind as to explain the charges, Mr. Payne, Think. I saw you enter this courtroom, a fresh attorney, and now I see you leave in chains. Ah, least in pain. Subtle as ever, I see. Ahem. Ahem. Sorry. <laughs> the crime occurred at the Borscht Bowl Club, a Russian restaurant. The defendant, Mr. Phoenix Wright, took the victim customer and he hit him bam, on the head Snap, killed him cold hmm a customer at the restaurant you say and the defendant you say he was the pianist for the club it seems 
Phoenix Wright, a pianist? This is the weapon that took the victim's life. A bottle of grape juice. Definitely not wine. Definitely not wine. This is apparently our defendant's drink of choice. Definitely you know, grape juice. <laughs> <laughs> the court accepts the deadly bottle as evidence. This game's goofy, I love it. Something to note, Justice. All evidence is filed in the court record. Make a practice of checking it frequently. The court record. Right. I've heard of that. Use the court record button to look at the evidence so far. Let's just do that now. We got attorney's badge. Smith's autopsy report. Let's check that. Shady Smith, unknown age. Cerebral hemorrhaging re resulting from blunt trauma to forehead. Got a photo. Ouch. And deadly bottle. Sure is a bottle. Sure is a bottle. I'm confident in your ability to handle this. I have this first case practically memorized, so I don't need this. Right. The court record button. Sounds like it's time for some hands-on action. We already did that. So, the victim was a customer at this restaurant. But just who was this, um, Shady Smith fellow? We believe he was a traveler, Your Honor. A traveler? According to his passport, he had been out of the country for a number of years. He had only returned to the country recently, so his place of residence is unclear. And he had some sort of connection with the defendant? That too is unclear at present, Your Honor. We believe they first met the Borschvold Club on the night of the crime. If they had only just met, then why murder? Perhaps the victim slighted the defendant's piano playing? That doesn't appear to have been the case. No, the motive had nothing to do with the defendant's lack of playing skill. Thanks. At least not piano playing. All of this a photo explain what I mean. As we can see, a game of poker was in progress at the scene of the crime. Wait a second. Isn't poker gambling? That's a crime in and of itself. Indeed. It appears our defendant has fallen to become the basest sort of criminal. A gambler! <laughs> a gambler. It is true the defendant was engaged in a game of poker with the victim. Yet it was only that. A game in the purest sense. Competition, you're on. Uh, competition? Yes, a test of wits. A silent clash of passions. Only the cards, their backs, reason, blue flame, knew its final outcome. Er, uh, come again? The cards on the table had blue backs, Your Honor. I believe the defense was waxing poetic in an attempt to mystify those present. And impress women. That'll be our first order of business here, then. To find out more about this fatal game of cards. Yes, everyone in this room is just trying to impress women. That's the goal of this court. <laughs> Very well, defendant. You will testify to the court about the poker competition held the night of the crime. My pleasure. This is it. My first trial. Here goes nothing. I'm a pianist by trade, yet I can hardly play at all. My real job is to take on interesting customers over at the poker table. The room where we play and the competition in there are the club's main attractions. And the rules are quite simple. You play a game of poker using two decks of cards. That's all it is. A game. And our customers are happy.
Hmm. A pianist who can't play a piano. Better than a defense attorney who can't defend. He has like an unbeatable win record, you dork. <laughs> Very well. The defense may begin the cross-examination. Right, your honor. First cross examination. Don't blow it. Are you all right? You're sweating bullets. Bullets? Where? It's a figure of speech, Justice. Your voice sounds strained and raspy, too. My brain feels strained and raspy, sir. You've watched me perform cross examinations many times. Though you've never done one yourself, have you? Care for a refresher? What to do? Can I ask Mr. Gavin for a refresher in the cross examination? Absolutely not. No thanks. <laughs> no need for help here, sir. I think I've got this one covered. I think you'd better do more than think. You know it or you do not. Wouldn't it suck if they gave us the tutorial anyway just because we said it like that? <laughs> that would be so fucking funny. I'm fine. The cords of steel are ready for battle. My weapons. Press and present. Yeah, they are kind of giving us the tutorial anyway. <laughs> Please. Find any inconsistencies, any lies in the testimony, and reveal them to the court. That is cross-examination. Learn it, know it, do it. Inconsistencies? Lies? Phoenix Wright? As if. Phoenix Wright would never lie. It's up to me to prove it. The defense may begin the cross-examination. I'm not going to have you read these every time I go through yeah. them, but like you can read the <laughs> the press. You can hardly play? Oh, I play sometimes when customers demand it. So I play them one song. It's usually all they want. Was that supposed to be a boast just now? The title of pianist is a mask, a respectful face I wear for the world at large. Sorry, then why are you really at the Borscht Bowl Club? I'm just so enraptured with the game. <laughs> That's actually true. Hold it. Hold it! They pay you just to play poker? That would seem to be the case. I am a professional, after all. <laughs> Do I detect pride in that statement? It's just hard for an honest, hard-working member of society like me to imagine. Oh, I love this upcoming line. Yes. Your imagination was always a bit limited, Winston. <laughs> what? <laughs> to, the, to the Shadow Realm with ye, holy... <laughs> I've played poker for seven years in that little room, and I've never lost once. What? You see why customers come now? Defeat the undefeated poker champion. It's quite a draw. That is, I'm quite a draw. No, see, you won. You didn't draw. <laughs> Wait, you never lost once? Not even one time? As I said, I'm a professional. He's played poker for seven years and not lost once? Is that even possible? The room in the crime scene photo is an attraction? It has quite a history, actually. The Borscht Bowl Club used to be a gathering spot for black market types back in the day. Black market? All in the past. Things like the black market are only on the silver screen nowadays. Suffice to say that there were a lot of deals being made under the table. Right there in that room. A smoky room, gambling hoods. You know, just looking at this picture makes me feel bad. 
The bosses gather around the table, cutting deals, safe from the eyes of the law. Meanwhile, the goon keeps watch through the small window. I can practically picture it now. That window, that window does look like it would be good for keeping a lookout, but little else. The room had a few other tricks to it. Though it was common knowledge to our regulars. At any rate, they came to play poker in a room steeped in history. Despite the dark past, it was all just good, clean fun. Two decks of cards? A simple measure to prevent cheating. If you alternate two decks, no one can slip in cards. There's something else I noticed. In addition to the cards on the table, there are some lying scattered on the floor. Precisely. Cards on the table, cards on the floor. Each one forming a complete deck. The crime scene is painted blue by a sad streak of cards. It's poetic, really. It's not. <laughs> Incidentally, we use two types of cards at the club. One deck of cards was red, the other blue. Hmm. As I recall, in poker you make five card hands. I can see how it would be easy to cheat. Yeah, a game of hands. This competition you're talking about. I believe the court understands the nature of the game sufficiently. That's right. It was a simple game after all. Are you sure? Huh? People are not murdered over simple games, Mr. Justice. I mean... Defendant, you were in the room the very moment that the crime occurred. Yet you claim no connection to the crime? That's strange. What's strange? I was testifying about the competition that night. Asking me about the crime at this point is against the rules, Your Honor. Of course, I expected to hear a cry of objection from the defense. <laughs> I completely let that one slip by. Don't despair yet, Justice. S sir? Right. There's something I'd like made clear. Namely, your connection to the case at hand. I'd like to hear it from you. Sure, why not? Very well. The defendant will amend his testimony. Just one little press. And I got myself a whole new testimony. Good job, Apollo. Good job, Apollo. I plead silence regarding the murder. But I will say I never touched the murder weapon. Silence? The defendant has the right to refuse to testify. It's true. I haven't forgotten everything about the law. But why? That clearly puts you at a disadvantage. It's your job to turn that around in your favor, yeah? Great. I didn't have enough to do already. Justice, didn't you detect anything odd about that testimony? Huh? Wait, something he said did ring a little strangely. Just one thing. Now what was it? Gosh, could it be in the new piece of testimony? When you figure it out, I suggest presenting evidence. Evidence? That contradicts the testimony. A contradiction in Mr. Wright's testimony? But why? I better check the court record. I can't imagine Mr. Wright lying in a testimony. No, never. Isn't it a little early to be jumping to conclusions? This is your first cross-examination. Take it slow. If you need more information, don't forget to press. 
Right! I got it! I'm fine! Time to listen to that testimony again. There's no way to speed up this text. Can you not, like, press, like, B or something? Uh, I don't know how to, like... I don't know if there are any buttons, really, for... Like, I've tried pressing... Oh, never mind, there are a couple buttons. <laughs> but I've been... I've just been clicking. That's fair. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Uh, you can push, uh... The Y. And, like, you can, like, yell into the mic to do stuff. <laughs> yeah, I'm not doing that. <laughs> Fair. I don't know if this is even connected to my microphone. I think we'd have to ask permission before doing that. Yeah. All right, let's go. Objection! I mean, I'm totally it. using a Game Boy. It's fine. Or a DS, yeah, whatever. No, real actual one. Yeah. So you say you didn't touch the murder weapon. This bottle of grape juice? Right? So I said. Something the matter, Mr. Justice? <laughs> Too bad our new defense attorney never learned how to play dumb. What's this, Mr. Payne? I examined the bottle in question, you see. And it was covered with the defendant's fingerprints. Shot! No need to shout, Mr. Justice. I can hear you just fine. <laughs> Excess yelling can damage the judge's ears. And our case. <laughs> but, but what about my cords of steel? A anyway. What's so strange about fingerprints on a bottle in the restaurant? Well, that's true. The prints alone don't prove it. Objection! Oh, they wouldn't prove a thing if they were normal fingerprints. Huh? But the fingerprints of the murder weapon were upside down. Upside down? What does that mean? I meant that he was holding the bottle inverted, and there could be only one reason for that. to brain someone with the bottle. Ah! I'm getting some weird crackling in my headset. Whoops. Mr. Gavin, I think things took a turn for the worse. Oh, well, I see no problem, Justice. Huh? Give me one second. Yep. Okay, I fixed it immediately. I just, like, clicked literally anything off the screen, <laughs> and it went back to normal. Nice. <laughs> the only thing that matters is the truth. There's a good reason for everything. You'll see. Defendant, can you explain your fingerprints on this bottle to the court? I stand by my plea of silence regarding the murder. For now. I love that this guy went from, like, almost Christmas means it wasn't Christmas and, like, arguing about stepladders and shit to playing goddamn 6D chess with everyone. Seven years. <laughs> Seven years is a long time to, like, grow. Phoenix Wright was terrifying before. He's even more terrifying now. Yeah. Because at this point, like, what's he have to lose in a courtroom? Yeah. Like, I mean, he could, he could go to jail and die well, i mean like what are the chances <laughs> that phoenix right will go to jail and die i mean right <laughs> anyway anyway hmm not very cooperative are you this could hurt your case i'm sure he's uncooperative because he's hiding something but there must be some reason objection objection your honor you seem to have forgotten something and what might that be, Mr. Gavin? On the night of the crime, who was it that reported the murder to the police? Reported? Well, that was the defendant, Mr. Wright, but still, that... Really? 
Yeah, uh, yes. Well, according to the case file, the murder was reported from near the scene by a call from the defendant's cell phone. Near the scene? Let's take a look at the diagram of the murder scene, shall we? The victim was murdered in a small room in the basement two floors down from the ground level. Of course, cell phones can't get reception so far down. The defendant used the stairs in this hallway to go above ground. The call came from the first floor of the restaurant. I love that we had to use a diagram of the crime scene to establish the fact that there were stairs. <laughs> <laughs> stairs to the basement. I see. And this is the phone that made the call. The defendant could have just fled the scene of the crime if he so choose. If he so chose. <laughs> Wrong conjugation there. Doing great. Hold the cell phone. Ooh. There's a little schmutz back here. Wow, the batteries are held in with a piece of tape? We should just buy a new one. Maybe he can't afford it. Or maybe he just doesn't care. Yet he fulfilled his duty as a citizen and reported to the authorities. And you claim he is being uncooperative? Good point. Yeah. You see why G uh, Gavin's a good attorney? Yeah. Please save Mr. Gavin. I better not waste this. I think the prosecution has toyed with our client enough for the time being. Wait, I assure you, no one is more serious about... What was it you said? The defendant was in the room the very moment that the crime occurred? How could you possibly know this? That's a good question. How indeed? The answer is simple, Your Honor. The prosecution has a decisive witness. <laughs> You're as good as they say you are. So, someone else was in the room in the night of the crime. That must mean they witnessed the crime. Everything up till now has been a warm-up, Mr. Justice. Are you ready? Very well. The prosecution may call its first witness to the stand. Fuck. <laughs> Here she is! I didn't prepare. I didn't practice. We're just gonna go for it. The witness will state her name and profession. H hold on just a moment. Where's the witness? <laughs> I surmise that she has been frightened by the defendant's demonic-looking horns. The defense... Defense is demonic looking horns. What did I say? He said defendant. I thought you used a little hair gel. Relax, people. Phoenix does not have horns. It's true, he has spikes. Have no fear. If any horns point in your direction, this court will cut them off. <laughs> you are sure? I swear it on my gavel. Please come out. Violence against hair a crime, your honor? <laughs> well, if you are sure it is okay. Ahem. No, the prosecution... W wait a minute. Would the prosecution care to explain the witness's um, paraphernalia? Uh, yes. She is a professional, your honor. Those are merely the tools of her trade. And that would be? My name is Olga Orly. I am employed as waitress in Borschbull Club restaurant. Then why the camera? Of course, it is my pride to serve Borscht that is naming restaurant. But I also perform, how is it said, other service. I take it one of these other services is taking the customer's pictures. Da, da. Like, for example, this one. Th that's 
the defendant? Indeed, on the night of the murder. Man in white hat is one who has gone kaput. Indeed, that is the victim. Order, order. This is quite a piece of evidence to casually drop into our laps. It's the same way as I drop cold bowls of borscht on laps of customers. Casually. I think you want to be doing that. <laughs> hmm. Then the court will casually accept this new evidence. <laughs> now, witness, where were you at the time of the murder? I was in room... The hideout, we call it. Uh, excuse me? The hideout? It's his room where famous gangster Bad Guy was arrested. <laughs> bad Guy. You know, is, bad room, guy. is room where murder took place. What? Your look of utter surprise. It is lovely. I will post my courtroom door later for you. Why was he surprised he knew this information? But it was confirmed. It was already confirmed. There was a photograph. <laughs> it's double confirmed. <laughs> da da. Photos will be numbered, and you will write which ones you want copy of. So there were three people in the room at the time of the crime. The victim, Shady Smith, Mr. Wright, and Olga Orly, our witness. Mr. Wright isn't the killer. That means... Very well. Witness, you will testify to the court about that night's events. <sighs> that night, customer asked me to deal cards for a game. It was cold. Both players played with hats on, duh? The victim, he plays whole time with his hand on locket at his neck. Then, last hand is done, but something terrible has happened, duh? That man flew at victim and is strangling him to death. Hmm. Incidentally, who won the game? Isn't it obvious? The winner was the victim, Mr. Smith. Objection! Objection! That's ridiculous. Um... Because... Because Mr. Wright can't lose. Hey, Apollo. <laughs> Justice. Maybe you can come up with a more legitimate objection. But he hasn't lost in seven years. Take it from me, kid. It happens. I didn't lose a case my first seven years as prosecutor, either. I swear I didn't click through that. Incidentally, I have some evidence here. This fucking puzzle. <laughs> These are the poker chips as they lay the very moment of the crime. A hand and chips on this side belong to the defendant, Mr. Wright. Those on the far side belong to the victim, Mr. Smith. Chips, you say? I mean, yes. Imagine that poker is war. Your hand is your army, and the chips are the spoils. You can just say it's the prize, my dude. No, I have to be dramatic. <laughs> I, I know that. After all, in my- I didn't click that either. In my youth, I was known as the poker head of courtroom number three. I think he means the poker face. Hmm, looking at this picture... It does seem that most of the chips are on the victim's side of the table. Very well. The defense may cross-examine the witness. Do I want to press everything, even if I already know what to present? Nah. Okay. Have to. <laughs> whatever, whatever you want to do. All right. Yeah, that's kind of that's kind of obvious. Yeah. Yeah, I don't even have to remember this case to know the problem here. Oh really? Strangled, you say? That's odd. Da, normal customers only choke on borscht. 
how bad is this board? <laughs> no, I, I mean, the report shows the victim died to a blow on the head. Ah! Miss Orly, really now, did you witness the crime? I caught a glimpse of my... I caught a glimpse of myself in my webcam view when I did the, the act. And I realized that I made no facial expression. I <laughs> 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 just kind of... Ack! <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Looking at the picture, it doesn't seem like he was hit. He's still wearing his hat and everything. Yet yeah, it is a fact that he was hit, Your Honor. Here's a photo we took of the victim with his hat off during our investigation. Well, that's quite shocking, isn't it? His head certainly was hit. Got bonked. But, but, I have seen it happen. The defendant, he lunged victim, his neck. Oh, really, Miss Orly? I think I've caught you in your own little lie this time. Justice. I admire your enthusiasm, but perhaps you should think this through once more. Well, what do you mean? I found a contradiction! There's one thing in her testimony that troubles me. Oops, sorry. Very well. It seems we should cr continue the cross-examination. There's such a thing as thinking too much. This horse is dead. Let's stop feeding it. There's such a thing as thinking aloud too much, too. The parentheses in Phoenix Wright games always baffle me because it seems like it's a silent thought, but then people always respond to it. Sometimes it's a silent thought that you say out loud because you're not thinking about it. I guess, but they don't always make that clear. <laughs> I, think, I think that kind of makes it a little fun, where it's like sometimes people react to the silent thoughts. That's true. That's fun. Let me just... Okay, just making sure. Yeah, there's no, there's no necklace there. Nope. You know, there was one curious part in her testimony, just like Mr. Gavin said. But what does it mean? Mr. Justice, would you care to explain what it is you're thinking so intensely about? Recall the testimony, Your Honor. The victim played with... His locket at his neck, I believe she said. I hope you aren't about to raise an objection to the witness's grammar. No, but look at this photograph. Every time I do it makes me laugh. I was wondering if that was coming. Do you see a locket on the victim's neck? Well done, Justice. I'm impressed. I knew you'd be able to handle this. But, but what does it mean? If we are to believe this witness's testimony as is, then the locket disappeared following the victim's death. Lockets don't just disappear, Your Honor. It's quite simple when you think about it. If the locket is gone, someone must have taken it off, no? Apartment complex? I find it quite simple. <laughs> taken it off? Wait, you don't mean... The defendant wasn't strangling the victim at all. He was taking off his locket. Wouldn't that explain it? Ah! Yeah? D defendant, what do you have to say to this? Say. Yes? I just noticed this, but... You have something hanging around your neck, don't you? You mean this? Yes, it's a locket. With a photograph inside. A photo of my daughter. Again? <laughs> Mr. Wright! You have a daughter? We confirmed it at the time of the arrest. <laughs> we, we confirmed his daughter? <laughs> <laughs> the picture in the locket is indeed Mr. Wright's daughter. 
We ran a paternity test. <laughs> that was part of the investigation. It was very relevant to the case, Your Honor. <laughs> I just had to know, Your Honor. So, Mr. White has a locket too? Why don't I buy that? It's just a coincidence. Well now, if the results of this poker game led to the murder, perhaps we should hear a bit more about the outcome of the game. Further testimony won't really be necessary. It's clear that the defendant lost. Badly. Yeah, it's clear. Yeah. Mm. Miss Orley, you will testify to the court about the game played between the victim and the defendant. D da The game began with 3,500 points in chip for each man. House chips come in two sizes, small and large. The one who was winning, duh, it was the victim. For last hand, defendant play with all chips on table and lose. The moment loss was decided, defendant grabs bottle from table and... Indeed, looking at this picture, it does seem to be a one-sided game. Court knows poker was the defendant's life. Failure must have been a bitter pill to swallow. Ah, uh, how many times have I heard these words? I done it in a fit of anger, Your Honor, and now I regret what I done. A common tale, but true. Methinks the methinks the judge watches too many old court movies. Mr. Wright said he was, hasn't lost in seven years, so this testimony must be wrong. Apollo, you really gotta come up with a better reason than that. I just really love Mr. Phoenix Wright. He's so cool. <laughs> Even as a hobo. Alright, let's see. I gotta tell you, I love Hobo Phoenix Wright. I love his design. I love how chill he is. I love everything about it. I think I have to press this one. Are the chips in this photo all the chips that were used? Da da uh, of course. Oh, something's fishy with these chips. Should I press harder? Maybe you could explain a bit about these chips. I explain? What is there to be explained? Objection! <laughs> poker chips are poker chips. They're not efficient chips. They're not a chip off the old block. Not a motorcycle cop or a... Thanks. <laughs> now that I've pressed her, I'd better ask something. What are these chips worth? Are they in dollars or boobles even? Yet, as I have been saying before, it was game, not gambling. Hard, perhaps, for a capitalist to understand. Oh. <laughs> Two types of chip, 100 points chip and 1,000 points chip. It is not money, duh. Justice? Sir! Don't you find her comments interesting? In more ways than one, sir. I'd have it added to her testimony myself. Well, does the defense want the witness to add to her testimony? Yep. Yes, please. Yes, I do think this deserves further scrutiny. Add to the testimony. I wish I knew where I was going with this. It's okay, Apollo, I do. Very well. Witness, if you would be so kind. D die, Your Honor. I'm just going to press this one, too, just in case. Just double check, and then Mr. I'll Gavin said present. This testimony is important. To be honest, I have no idea why. Can you count, sir? No. <laughs> Mr. Justice, <laughs> do the court a favor and think of what you want to say before raising your hand. We are not in kindergarten. Ah, sorry, I'm fine. I better think of something to ask. And quick. 
Um, the two types of chips. Duh? Um, the small ones are 100 and the big ones are 1,000. Uh, right? Right? Of course. Hmm. Don't waste our time. Ugh. Is that all? Um, yeah. Great. Mr. Gavin made me stop her. Now I'm the one who looks dumb. Oh, justice. Please try not to embarrass me like that. Huh? Did who? Me? There's a clear contradiction in the information in your hands. What? It's a simple matter of calculation. Go on. Try it. We're not in kindergarten, after all. Calculation? That was a little mean. That Gavin. was a little mean, Gavin. That was a little mean. <laughs> you don't have, have to come for his throat like that. I mean, come on, man. Objection! Objection! You're sure it was the victim who won? Absolutely sure. Our new attorney is a bit confused. A glance at the picture is enough to tell you who won, if you're not in kindergarten. Back with the kindergarten. Um, just for safety's sake, could you explain the problem to the court? Of course, Your Honor. In the photo, I see small chips, and I see large chips. Tell me, which were worth 1,000 points? Why, the big ones, of course. Duh! Oh, I thought so too. But then the totals don't add up. The... the totals? Let's review what the witness told us. Each man started with 3,500 points in chips. And the combined total value of all the chips was 7,000 points. Yes, if my calculations are correct. Let's see, 3 plus 1, carry the 5. Um, they are, Your Honor. Now, look at this photo that allegedly shows all the chips. If the big chips are worth 1,000 points and the small chips are worth 100, and you add them up, how much is it? Do it yourself. You aren't in kindergarten, are you? <laughs> 10,600 points. The chips don't add up. This clearly contradicts the witness's testimony. But, but why? How could this be? <laughs> One second. Yeah, there's uh, 10 big, and there are 6 small. But, wait. Aren't the small ones worth 1,000? Yeah. So how does that add up to 3,500? Uh, 3,500 each, so 7,000 7, total. Each. Got it. Three that was the part I was missing. <laughs> 3 small, 5 large. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we did it. Exactly. Now that you know the what, we must determine the why. Right. There's only one possible way to explain this contradiction. Both were right. Each man began the game with 3,500 points. If all the chips are indeed shown in this photograph, then there can only be one answer. Well, what is it? The value of the chips was the other way around. Wh what Want to know what I think? The small chips were worth 1,000 points, not the big ones. Madness! Utter madness! Show me that photograph of the chips again! There are six small chips and ten large chips. Why, that does make 7,000 points when you add them up. Excellent work, Justice. At 
it's almost as though you figured it out by yourself. Fuck off, Kristoff. That's really mean. Well, I'm just glad I was the one who said it. <laughs> <laughs> but wait! The value of the chips may be different, but that changes nothing! Indeed, the victim did have the larger number of chips still. Ah! Exactly. If the small chips are 1,000 points and the large chips are 100... Let's do a little math. Half the points for each side of the table. Ah! The victim, Mr. Smith. Thanks. Uh, 2900. 4100 points! <laughs> I hate that this game just fucking auto scrolls sometimes. <laughs> well, now. It seems that Mr. Wright was winning that night after all. I knew he couldn't lose. <laughs> That's impossible! My client has even less reason to kill the victim. After all. He was winning! Ah! Now, Miss Orley, you must have known the true value of the chips. Since you were there at the scene of the crime, weren't you? One second. It was crackling again, I had to fix it. No worries. I love the no-look catch. That's, that's fucking love yeah, it's so good. Much. Order! Order! It appears our defendant has lost his motive. And Mr. Wright's supposed defeat never happened. We must now ask us... Barely even got through that one. I excuse me, what is it, Miss Orley? I... I did not want to be saying this, but... Actually, you see, um... See what, Miss Orley? What do we see? In the last hand, there was cheat! Uh, cheat? You, you don't mean... A trick? Wait, or do you mean... A scam? They're all the same thing! Yes, there was cheat in last hand. That is why game ends with chips as they are. Great. Just great. First we have lying, now cheating. Well, this case certainly has taken a turn. For the interesting. Witness, you will please testify to the court. Tell us about this cheating in the final hand. I genuinely don't know what accent I'm doing for the judge. I'm just kind of <laughs> winging just, it. Just fucking free ball it. Just, free ball just it. yeah. I don't know accents. I can't. Just, just have fun. <laughs> the last hand, both men had full house. There is four of each card in deck, from ace to king. If you look at both men's hands, cheat is more obvious. The next moment, game becomes argument. Da, the defendant's trick was exposed. He took bottle in his hand. Poor Mr. Smith. Yeah, poor Mr. Smith. <laughs> poor Mr. Smith. Miss Orley. Why did you not tell the court about this from the very beginning? I thought I smelled a cover up here. Well, folks, it's time to throw back the covers. <laughs> a weird analogy. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. A full house is a very high-scoring hand. Not easy to make, in my experience. That alone is enough to suspect the less than scru scrupulous. 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 There you Why go. Why is it so hard? <laughs> that alone is enough to suspect less than scrupulous of tactics. Um, Mr. Gavin? What's a full house? Lawyers these days, you don't know your poker? Or your Yahtzee. I can't say this bodes well for your case. Or career. Oh no. <laughs> what is this? Some kind of secret court poker ring? Justice. 
You know the terms one pair, two pair, and three of a kind, yes? Uh, yeah, no problem! Two cards with the same number make a pair, and three makes a three of a kind. Good. Now picture a hand with one pair, and one three of a kind. That's a full house. Hmm, that doesn't sound very easy to make, does it? You can see each player's hand in the photo. Wow, they both have full houses. We forget, there's an easy way to make a full house. And go undefeated for seven years. You cheat. Valid point. Ahem. The defense may cross-examine the witness. You did cheat in the last hand. That still leaves one very important question. Mr. Wright lost that hand. Who's ever heard of a professional con man losing when they cheat? Let's see... I think it's this one. How was it clear? Duh, well, the defendant, he played a fifth ace. A fifth ace? I still remember both hands very well. Mr. Smith's hand had three aces. And Mr. Wright's, too. Obviously, cheating was afoot. Or perhaps I should say, hand! Your Honor, perhaps this can be added to the testimony without Mr. Payne's joke. <laughs> Very well. The witness will add this detail to her testimony, please. Catherine's a fucking dick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so about that. Objection! <laughs> Objection! It appears that the witness is mistaken. Mistaken? But my name... Look, this piece of evidence clearly contradicts what you said in your testimony. I'm surprised it took them up to the fourth game to make that joke. <laughs> yeah, honestly, it's a good joke. That's the photo of the chips, is it not? Justice. Perhaps you ought to explain your point in a way that the judge can comprehend. In other words, use your finger to point out your point. Yes, please point out the contradiction in this photo. What particular point contradicts the witness's testimony? Uh, this right here. Miss Orley, in your testimony you make the following claim. Mr. Smith's hand has three aces. But as you can clearly see, the victim's hand had only two aces. Yeek! Objection! Well, maybe the witness was simply confused. Perhaps it was the defendant's hand that held the third ace in question. Objection! Objection! Take another look at the evidence. As you can see, the defendant also had two aces in his hand. Where's the fifth ace? I see cheating, all right. That's going on right here in this courtroom. Actually, kind of a cool line. Good job, Apollo. Nice. Let's go. <laughs> two aces in each player's hand does make four aces total. Hardly proof of cheating. Oh, wait, please. It is true. I have seen it. The fifth ace. There was cheating, I swear to you. That's odd. She must be lying, yet she's the most sincere I've seen her all day. You're right to trust your instincts. Mr. Gavin? Who knows what lies in store for us in the trial ahead? Certainly not me. Your Honor, if I may, <laughs> I have a suggestion. <laughs> What might that be, Mr. Gavin? If you don't mind, perhaps we might examine the actual cards 
The cards? Mr. Payne. Uh, yes? The player's hands that night were set aside as evidence, were they not? The defense would like to request that the cards be shown to the court. Very well, the prosecution will submit this evidence. Which will you examine? The victim's cards or the defendant's cards? These cards don't prove cheating was going on. Nothing will. I would like to see the victim's hand, please. It was the victim's hand that changed over the course of the witness's testimony. The defense requests time to examine Mr. Smith's cards. Very well. Mr. Payne, if you would. Very well. <laughs> we'll see the victim's hand. <laughs> they just cut it off. The wrist. <laughs> well, time's a-wasting. Get to it, Justice. Y yes sir When examining evidence, be sure to view it from all sides and angles. Try using the dials on the evidence viewer. That should give you a better perspective on the case. Okay, let's do this. I really wish you could just like drag it. Yeah. But that's just okay. Like What? Just like Disgaea. <laughs> you can you can rotate the <laughs> rotate the battle screen. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> sure. Okay. Whatever. <laughs> Your Honor, look at this. One of the victim's cards. The back is a different color. Yeah. Th that's impossible! But I put that card in Wright's hand! Ah! What was that, Miss Orley? No, n yet! Er, I merely said, uh, da, I have. Eek! Your Honor? M Mr. Gavin, yes? Tell me, what is the easiest way to cheat at poker? To cheat? I'll tell you. One merely needed a friend. A comrade, shall we say. A dealer. Ah-ah! Uh, uh. Wait, so you mean... This witness, Miss Orley? She's... She's the cheater. A professional, I'd wager. Order, order! Focus, Justice. Take the time, time to take advantage of her. I made a, a tar mistake. Good job, Apollo. Your Honor, <laughs> please recall the testimony we just heard. Th that's impossible. But I put that card in Wright's hand. Ergo, Miss Orga Orly conspired to cheat, not with my client, but with the victim, Mr. Shady Smith. First pursuit of the game. Let's go. <laughs> not only did she cheat, she cheated poorly. Wow. <laughs> Therefore, it's not hard to imagine altercation between her and the victim. Wait, you don't mean... The defense isn't accusing the witness, Miss Olga Orly, are you? Ah, the Phoenix Wright classic. Claim for justice! Always accuse the witness. <laughs> there were three people in the room at the time of the incident. And if Mr. Wright isn't guilty, that means... I am. I'm no guilty. <laughs> 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 the defense accuses the witness, Miss Olga Orly, of murder. Eek! 
Oh, she died. <laughs> Mr. Payne, where is your witness, Miss Olga Orley? Um, it appears she has lost, uh, consciousness, Your Honor. Hmm, Mr. Justice? Your Honor. It seems you've presented a new possibility to the court. One suggesting a connection between the witness and the victim, Mr. Smith. And that means... This court cannot pronounce a verdict for the defendant at this time. Eh, what? I did it. I held out. I see no point in prolonging the trial this day. The prosecution will need to make further inquiries. That's a familiar voice. Oh god, here he comes. M M Mr. Wright? We can't end the trial here, Your Honor. Not yet. What nonsense is a defendant spewing now? I think one of the cards had a different colored back. Don't you wonder what it means? What? What are you doing, Mr. Wright? Raising objections right when you're about to get off the hook? Ridiculous! Mr. Payne, you of all people should know. Mr. Wright has a talent for the ridiculous. I'm gonna cross-examine that parrot. <laughs> Perhaps we should get to the bottom of things. Let's clear up the facts about the game that fateful night. As we said before, we alternated between two decks of cards that night. That was what was said before. Thanks, Payne. The two decks at the club have different colored backs. Blue and red. One color per deck. Why use different colored backs? If we use the same color, the two decks might get mixed. Um, use different colors and they still got mixed up. We used the red deck for the last game. Hmm, I see. But that's odd. For some reason, I have this impression that you were using the blue cards. Yeah, me too. I'm sure someone said something about blue cards. Yes, yeah, someone. Can't imagine who that would be. Whatever. In the end, one card the wrong color got into the mix. Which means that there were cheating. Card slipped into the deck would seem to indicate cheating. Yet, this card raises two serious questions. Apollo? It, yes? Let's consider the first question, shall we? Think. In the last game, when was the card swapped? When? There are three broad possibilities here. It could have been swapped before the murder, during the murder, or after the murder. Well, yeah, thanks for the news bulletin, Mr. Wright. <laughs> of course it was swapped. Oh? It might be as simple as you think, Mr. Payne. Or it might not be. Yeah. I'd like to hear what Apollo thinks first. When do you think the cards were swapped? When was the card swapped into the deck? I would say after the murder. Mm -hmm. Perhaps it happened after the murder? What, what's that? Ridiculous! What's the point of cheating after the hands have been shown? That's silly! Objection! Yes! But tell me, how do you swap cards during the game? I'll take silly over impossible. <laughs> and now we have a volley. Take it from me, son. There's a lot of silly in this world. Very little impossible. 
O, even when the backs of the cards are a different color. If you pull that during the game, you'd be caught in no time. Ah. By Drew. That would mean that the blue card in question was swapped after the hands were shown. After the murder. Okay, this is going past silly and straight on into crazy. I ask again, what's the point of cheating after the game's over? Who would want to do that? No, indeed. That's one of the mysteries before us. There's another? Yes. A simple, yet decisive question must be asked. Who swapped the red card for a blue card? What? Who? The game and a murder is done. The victim is dead. Only two remain in the room. Alive, that is. The defendant, Phoenix Wright, and our witness, Olga Orly. Okay. So who was it that swapped the red card for a blue card? Someone else. The one who swapped the cards wasn't Mr. Wright, of course. And, well, it doesn't seem like it could have been Olga Orly either. Well, what are you suggesting? That's hardly a logical conclusion, I'll admit. As a defense, I think it only makes sense for you to name Miss Orly at this point. Yes, yes, I know. But she was the one who dealt the cards, right? I I just can't believe she would make the mistake of swapping the wrong color card. Yeah, you'd have to be a fucking idiot to do that, right? Yeah, some kind of moron. <laughs> <laughs> and if the card was swapped during the game, it'd be obvious. Something you'd like to share with the court, Mr. Wright? Oh, my apologies, Your Honor. I was just thinking how much fun this all is. Fun? How about confusing? I have no idea what the defense is claiming, Your Honor. If the one who swapped the cards wasn't the defendant, and it wasn't Miss Orly, then who was it? Uh, yeah, well... That is the question, isn't it? <laughs> Precisely. Huh? I believe we're about to see this case take a new direction. And I think that it would be perfect to see this case take a new direction next time. Yeah! I don't completely know how to save, but I know how to <laughs> use a save state. Yeah, save state. On our perfectly normal copy of the game. Yeah. Um. All right. Actually, I don't know how to. Oh, hang on. Yeah, got it. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Okay. Then, yeah, I will catch you and everyone else next time. See you, friends. Bye bye.